Do you remember the 2001 hit Area Codes by Ludacris? He's using area codes to call out all the places where he's gotten biblical with ladies. When you see a map of all his area codes, two things become clear. One, Ludacris has very specific geographic tastes. And two, there's no apparent logic to the way our area codes have been laid out. Our zip codes have an orderly logic. Starting in the northeast with zero, the first digit increases as you travel west. Our interstate system has its own logic, too. Even-numbered highways travel east to west. The east-west routes start with the lowest number, Highway 10, down south. Odd-numbered highways travel north and south. They start with Interstate 5 on the west coast. New York City's grid follows this logic. As you go north or west, the street numbers get higher. When it comes to area codes, there is a method to the madness, but it's got more to do with population and the form factor of old phones than it does with geography. Mr. Hansen, please, long distance calling. I'm sorry, the line is busy. In the beginning, your phone line ended as a jack on a switchboard in the telephone company's office. The operator sat at the switchboard connecting your call to your neighbor literally completing the circuit with small pieces of wire. In the late 1870s, there were so few phones in a given town that the phone lines were identified by name. As phones became more common, we needed a better identification system. So we started identifying individuals' phones with a combination of the name of the local exchange and five numbers. Each exchange could facilitate about 10,000 phone subscribers. The people running the bell system realized they'd never be able to hire enough operators and build enough switchboards to keep up with rising demand. New numbers kept coming, old numbers were used more often. We hurried to keep ahead. We added new switchboards and more and more operators, but it wasn't enough. We figured out that someday there wouldn't be enough girls in the entire country to handle the growing demand. It would be more efficient and profitable to devise a system where you didn't need operators at all, a completely digit-based system. So in the 1940s, Bell engineers began devising the North American numbering plan. It divided the United States and Canada into 86 separate regions. Each region assigned a unique three-digit code, the area code. The area codes allowed the primitive computers to do the routing that human operators had once done. They also gave us a bigger supply of unique phone numbers. The codes were assigned by population and the particular hardware in use at the time, the rotary dial. New York City, the most densely populated and economically significant city, was given an area code that would be fastest to dial, 212. A mere five pulls on the rotary dial. Chicago and LA, the next biggest cities, got the second easiest area codes to dial, 312 and 313, six pulls on the rotary dial. The Bell engineers also wanted to minimize the potential for a human error, so they made sure to put a lot of geographic distance between numerically similar codes, like Washington State's 206 and Arizona's 602, or Florida's 305 and Oregon's 503. When the system debuted to the public in 1951, it used 86 three-digit codes out of a possible 152. The goal was to build a system that was maximally efficient and could also accommodate future growth. As demand for phone numbers exploded in the 80s and 90s, we started running out of numbers. Some area codes were split, while others took on overlay codes. So 305, which used to cover all of Florida, got broken up so that now it only applies to the Miami area. New York's 212 became the area code for Manhattan, while Queens, the Bronx, and Brooklyn got 718. Demand was so great that they eventually had to overlay additional codes. Queens and Brooklyn also got 347, 929, and 917. Area codes don't really matter geographically, now that we can take our cell numbers with us, but phone numbers are a finite resource. There are only so many ways to combine seven digits or ten digits. You don't mean to tell me you're running out of telephone numbers? According to current projections from the North American Numbering Plan Administrator, we're likely to exhaust our supply of phone numbers by 2048. When that happens, there are several options. One example would be to just slip a nine into the area code, my area code, 336 would become 3936, San Francisco's 415 would become 4915. 
So enjoy your three-digit area codes until then. Thanks for watching. Hit the comments to tell us about how nostalgic you are for your old area code, how traumatized you were when the North American Numbering Plan Administrator forced you to change, or whether you've seen the Simpsons episode, A Tale of Two Springfields, when Homer discovers there are two Springfield area codes and leads a revolt. Like, subscribe, hit the bell icon to get notified next time Cheddar puts out a new video. See you next time!